Welcome to this video on the energy in the electric field of a capacitor. Finally, we're getting to a point where we're going to be ready to start making this useful. Remember, these all these different energy transformations that we're using is kind of what we want, right? We want to make light, we want to make sound, we want to make movement, and all of that is a different form of the same thing, which is energy. And energy doesn't just spontaneously erupt from nowhere inside the capacitor. It is it's brought into the system by work done. So if we remember this chain of events that we talked about before, work is done by a battery usually, right? And we'll look at other things later on when we get to magnetism, but work is done by a battery and what the work does is it separates charge. And the separation of charge is going to establish or begin to establish the potential difference across the capacitor plates. Now remember, there is a potential difference already established across the battery, which is needed to even separate charge and do work in the first place. So this is kind of um, a looped process, but the work done by the battery is what we're most uh, kind of focused on here. Because remember, work is defined as a transfer of energy. So if I'm transferring energy from the chemical system into this electrical system, what we're going to see here is that the work done, right, is equal to every charge that you pull off of one of the plates times the potential difference across the plates. Now that would look like this, Q times V minus V something. Right? So we might have V final minus V initial or V1 minus V2 or something to that effect. But essentially there is a difference in the potential here. So when I first start this process, there's very little potential difference across the plates of the capacitor. And as time passes, the potential difference increases until it reaches the potential of the battery. All right. So we we don't have a constant voltage the whole time and that's what's going to become very important here when we get this expression. Now eventually the amount of charge that it, that work is done on will become the same amount of charge that's stored on the plates that ultimately leads to the amount of energy. So if I want to bring capacitance into this concept of work here, what I would say is that we know the expression Q over delta V um, is capacitance, so therefore um, an expression for delta V could be Q over C. And I can take this expression and substitute it in here. So I can say that the work done by the battery is equal to Q times Q over C. Now at the end of the day, when all the charge has been put onto the plates, if you will, or moved off of the other plate, these two Qs are the same, so I end up with Q squared over the value of the capacitance. Now remember, the amount of work that is done, this transfer of energy, is the result of the amount of potential energy that's been stored. So every increment of work that I do, or that the battery does, that is transferring into the form of potential energy. Now here's the problem. When I actually look at the potential energy that's stored on or in this electric field, this is a pretty gross um, overestimation. It's a large overestimation. What it should be is half this value. So really what the potential energy in the capacitor is, is really one half Q squared over C. So why is it that I have this double amount? Well, if we think about it in this perspective here, right? At the very beginning of the process, the amount of potential energy in the field is just zero joules. And by the end of the process, after all the work is done, the amount of potential energy in the capacitor is this total amount, which is Q squared over C. Now, the thing is that over the process here, right, the potential has changed. So at every instant along the way, we're not really calculating 
the right amount of work because we're overestimating how much potential there was across the plates. And the more potential there was, the more um, energy there was. So if I go ahead and take this idea and I say that if I were to add up what it was at the beginning plus what it was at the end and I divide it by 2, that would give me the actual amount of potential in the capacitor at the end because it never was a constant amount the whole time. It wasn't constantly increasing, right? And so what I'm going to find then is that that 2 here, this is 0 plus q squared over c divided by 2, which just comes out to be 1 half q squared over c. Now another expression that we'll commonly see here will also actually come out to be that the energy in the capacitor is equal to 1 half times c v squared. And you can see how that would come into play here by just doing another substitution from the original capacitance equation. And that would allow us to come up with two usable forms of the capacitance energy equation. So the amount of work that the battery does, so the work done by the battery, will ultimately lead to the amount of energy stored in the capacitor. And the energy stored in the capacitor should be one of these two expressions. That can either be 1 half CV squared or 1 half Q squared over C. And so just remember that if work is the transfer of energy, it has to be equal to these values at the end. Now if you're in the calculus-based physics world, we're going to take a look at how we can do this also using integration to show, and this makes more sense here, about why we would have this average amount rather than this overestimation.